Hi, this is Tim. Today we're gonna to go through how to control an Allen Bradley PowerFlex 525 drive with the Micro 800 line of PLCs. Now there's two ways you can do it. You can do it with the messaging instructions or Rockwell has a user-defined function block. In this video, we're gonna use the messaging and I'll put a link in the description to this whole series where we also show how to use the user-defined function block. Please take a moment to like this video and subscribe to our channel. We put out at least one automation video a week. And any questions that you have, feel free to put them in the comments. Your question this week could easily be next week's automation topic. For this video, we are using one of our Micro 820 PLC trainers. This one has the HMI option on the side of it. And also we've moved the PLC to the front of it just to make it a little easier doing the videos. And we're actually gonna use some sample code that you can download right off of Rockwell's site to do this. So we're gonna be using ID QA50341, and I'll put a link to it down in the description. Also note that the access level is everyone. That means that anyone can get to this ID right here. You don't have to have a tech support contract. All you have to do is log in. Now, okay, well, I don't have a login. Well, as I've shown in many other videos, it's very simple. It's just like registering for anything else. You put in your email, you put in your name. I think it does ask for a company, but okay, if you, if you don't have a company, put your school. If you don't have a school, just put your name again. It'll work. So at the bottom of this, there's gonna be a few files we can download. And let's download the bottom one, the PF525CCW with COP. It includes a few more things than this one above it. So we'll click it and go ahead and save it. And you're not gonna be able to open this right out of downloads. You're gonna to need to open up your Connected Components Workbench software. And then you're gonna to go to File and Import. And then go and find that file that we just downloaded. And then pause for a second. Because you're probably thinking, okay, well, let's download this. Well, this is a sample code but Rockwell may not have been using the PLC that you have in front of you when they made it. So let's go to the top of this tree that's labeled Micro 870, which is probably the first big red flag, Then we may need to make a few modifications to make it fit for our Micro 820. So we'll open it up, and there's several things that are different about it. First, they had a very decked out Micro 870 that they were using down here. It had plug-in modules, it had expansion modules. Actually, it had quite, it was quite a nice setup. We don't have that. We're just using the single 820 here. So first, let's change our controller. So right-click the Micro 870 and click Change Controller. And we're gonna change it in the case of ours, it'll be a 2080 LC2020 20 QBB. I'll select it and click OK. Now, an interesting stumbling block that I ran into the first time is it almost takes all the plugin modules out. But you see right here, it left this 2080 OF2 in here. So we need to delete it and the code will still work fine. It was just what they had in their chassis when they were putting this program together. Okay, and I almost slipped up and forgot about our ethernet configuration. Actually, let, before we fix our ethernet configuration here, let's go ahead and download this. Now, guys, take it one step at a time because I just want you to see this warning and understand it because I get a lot of calls from people that have downloaded a program and all of a sudden they can't connect to their PLC. And it's almost always this ethernet configuration. So right here, it gets this prompt, downloading the current ethernet settings will result in disconnection from controller. Continue with downloading of ethernet settings. If you see that, you need to make sure that you have the ethernet settings correct. And I don't have them correct, so I'm gonna say no here. Now this is interesting, it, it downloaded the program. I'm gonna click no. And it's, it's actually gonna let us go ahead and go with it. You could go ahead and go to run mode. Now we're not gonna do that because I wanna fix this. So let's click no. Okay, and under configure IP address and settings, they had theirs at 192.168.20.50. Now ours is 192.168.1.10. And our subnet is also different. Our subnet will be 255.255.255.0, which will be the default subnet. And let's go ahead and delete this gateway. We're not gonna use it. 
All right, now let's go ahead and download this program. And if you need any help downloading or configuring your drivers or any of that, look in the description. We'll have a link to this whole lesson series. We have lessons on all of that. Also, for everybody that's gung-ho, we're not done yet. So don't go running off, hitting your start button and thinking it's going to work. We still have a few parameters to set. We'll make sure we go back into run mode. And now let's have a look at our ladder code here. So we have two message instructions. Rung one has a message instruction and rung two has a message instruction. And the one thing we'll need to look at is this target config right here of both of those. So just double click on the timeout target and let's open that up. And this target path right here, right now it's for 192.168. 111, but our default IP address for our drive is 192.168.112. 11's our HMI over here. So let's change this to 12. And then let's change this one, the second message instruction, also to 12. Now here's the part that wasn't very clear in that tech note. So make sure you pay attention to this. According to the tech note, we're ready to go. So let's toggle that trigger bit and it appears nothing happened. It doesn't look like it's working. So let's toggle it again. Let's toggle it off now. And in about two seconds, your display is going to say F073, which is an Ethernet connection or Ethernet control loss. So it was working, but what was left out of that tech note is our control source and our speed source. So that's what we need to change. So let's go ahead and hit the stop button, which is gonna clear that fault. And then we need to go to parameter P46. P46 is going to be your control source. And P47 is going to be your speed reference. So let's just hit the select button and escape to highlight the um, letter and take it up to P. And let's go down to 46. And P46 is gonna be our start mode. Right now it's zero, which is our keypad. We're gonna take it to five, which is gonna be ethernet IP. And then let's hit the escape button and let's go to P46. We wanna set it to 15, which is gonna be ethernet IP. Okay, so now, Let's toggle this trigger again. Again, the trigger itself doesn't do anything. It just gets that ethernet communication going. And now let's toggle our start. And now it's running. Also, we can see it is running at 25 Hertz. And that corresponds to rung six. This move speed is 2,500. Let's double click there. And let's just bring it to 1500, which will be 15 hertz. You'll see it immediately drops down and we can take it on up to 60. And I apologize already for the noise on the mic when we do. Right there is 60. And it'll run on up there. And if we go back here, we can stop our drive. In fact, we don't even have to toggle to start off to make the stop work. It'll work at any time. But if we were to untoggle the stop, it won't immediately start back. You're gonna to have to toggle the start bit again. Now it also has a clear bit down here. And at first it won't appear it does anything. And here's why the really the, the user defined function block works better. But I think this is important to know how it works. One, because you may run into this out in the field. But if we unplug our drive, which is gonna give us that same ethernet loss, then when we plug it back in, so we think everything is fixed, and we toggle this clear bit, it's not actually gonna do anything. And that's because you have to get this ethernet communications going again. So we need to toggle the trigger bit off and then toggle it back on. And now we can come down to the clear and you can see the red flashing light. When I toggle this, it goes out. And so that is how you would clear the reset on the drive. So I hope this video has been helpful. Please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. And again, in the description, we have this whole lesson series, which will also include the user-defined function block.
to control the PowerFlex 525 drive. Till next time. Hi, this is Till. And this is Amber of TW Controls. We run the automation store. Hey, thanks for finding our channel. Here's a playlist with some similar videos. And YouTube thinks you'll like this video. Please like our video and subscribe to our channel. And if our videos have helped you make some money and you're not using our products, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Till next time. See ya.